Let me give you a very simple example of that. Let's take a skater on an ideal skating rink. So here's the skater. She's gliding across the ice at some velocity v. Now, if it's an suppose we observe this to happen. Oh, there's a skater. She's gliding gracefully across the ice at a constant velocity. She's going at the same speed and in the straight line. From the first law then, that must mean that the sum of all the forces acting on her are equal to zero. Doesn't mean there's no force. Just means that, there, that all the forces cancel out. Well, let's see, are there any forces that it could occur here? Well, we've got gravity is going to pull down on this person. And so we've got a force of gravity that's pulling down. Uh, and that gravity would make her fall, except that the ice is pushing up. Uh, if we had some friction on the ice, it would be pointing that way and slowing her down. But we, we notice that she's moving at a constant velocity, uh, so this must be equal to zero because it's not slowing down in that direction. So the fact that she's moving at a constant velocity uh, says that the sum of all the forces acting on her must be equal to zero. That means that the force of gravity plus the force of the ice plus the force of friction, all of that must be equal to zero in order to produce the result that we observe. Okay? That's all that the law of inertia of Newton's first law says. We observe something, this tells us what the forces are if the velocity is constant. If she's slowing down, then this sum must not be equal to zero. If she slows down as she glides across the ice, or if she speeds up, or if she changes direction, then that sum cannot be equal to zero.